Well, are we ready to get in the Word? Swords in the air. This is my Bible. Bible. It's God's holy Word. I am who it says I am. I I can do what it says I can do. I I will be taught taught. the Word of the living God. God. Faith will come. come. Because faith comes by hearing. hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. And I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now you, uh, you remember, actually it was August 16th, uh, I preached on, or started to preach on the fruit of the spirit. And that was part one. And uh, so today... I'm going to part two, and every now and then I'll interject another fruit. Um, And uh, so just to kind of give you a a renewing, uh, I wrote some stuff down here that, uh, that remember this, that there was one fruit, but there's nine manifestations. There's nine manifestations. And number one, Jesus produces the fruit. Remember, we're called trees of righteousness. Remember that? And that we're the tree. We're the one that bears it. But Jesus Christ is who produces the fruit. And we bear it. And then that's the second thing. And the third thing is the Father supervises or he oversees the process. So in other words, that, um, that we're the trees of righteousness. Jesus Christ is who produces the fruit. We are the one who bears the fruit. And Father God is who oversees it. And the wonderful thing is, is that a lot of time we don't like the trimming and the, and the pruning. That's not the good fun part. But God uh, must do that so we can bear more fruit, so we can uh, be a healthy tree. You know, how many knows, uh, you know, I learned this a long time ago. The Lord, in fact, I preached a message one time in Texas many years ago. Um, about being in balance and how the Lord showed it to me was that you can have a car and even though the tires are good and even though the car is good but you have one tire that is out of balance that you can't go very fast because if you've got tires that are out of balance on a vehicle long as you go slow you're okay But once you try to pick up some speed, that car will start jostling around and, you know, sometime it'll even throw you off the road if you're you're going too fast. And so it is very important to be in balance. Say that out loud. It's important important. for me to stay in balance. If I get way out of balance, 
with this, then I'm way out of balance with everything else. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, so we want to stay in balance. And so what God does is he oversees, he, he watches over our trees of righteousness, if you will. And, and he, uh, he observes our producing and our bearing forth of what Jesus has already paid for. Is this making sense? Amen. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, so to bear, and you know, we're talking about spiritual fruit today. I love it how that the Lord uses examples uh, in the natural, cause I'm a I'm a visual person, and you know I, I, you know I was one of those kids in class that I was thrilled to make a B plus. Woo, I made a B plus, you know, because uh, I was one of those that uh, thick headed, if you will. But once I got it in there, boy, wild horses couldn't pull it out. But it took a minute to get it in there sometimes. And so uh, I love the way the Lord uses natural il- illustrations so I could get it. Amen. And, uh, and so um, what we want to look at is that uh, the process, the process of our, our producing uh, the fruit that Jesus has already paid for. And so uh, I, I wrote a couple of things down here. Uh, to bear spiritual fruit, you must, number one, reject sin. To bear spiritual fruit, you must reject sin. Jeff, can you turn that where it'll go turn off of me? And number two is we walk in holiness. And what what do you mean by that? By walking in holiness? Well, God is holy, and He said, "Be ye holy, as I am holy." Now, how do we know? We know that God is pure and flawless and righteous, and there is no sin in Him, and there's no problems. And so, for us to walk in in holiness means to walk in him to stay in him and to be in him and how many knows that we fail along the way that we mess up amen you know we find ourselves repenting i believe i'm a true repenter i believe in repentance and uh, and but he said in other words the word walk means to make it a way of life to stay in him amen and then the third one is that we must delight ourselves in the in the law of God, in God's law. And what does that mean? That means that even in the midst of, of things that we've got to go through in this life, that to delight ourselves in the law, let me show you how to know if you're doing that. Okay, so, uh, so uh, let's just say that you're going through something that's been an ongoing uh, problem, an ongoing thing that you've had to deal with. And uh, and you uh, and and it's bearing on you. It's bearing on you. But how to know that you've got uh, you you you're uh, you're you're walking in the delight of the word? Is there is something on the inside of you? I'm not talking about the outside because outside you're going to have. You know, there's arguments and trials and temptations and junk, junk going on. But on the inside of you, because of the Word of God, you know that you know that you know that somehow you're going to come out. That you're going to be all right. Right now, you may not feel all right. But you know, with or without, sink or swim, up and down, something in you because what the Word says. As Sister Marie said this morning, there's not any trial, not any loss that we go through that we have to go through it alone. Because why? Because the Word said. Not because Sister Barbara said, but because the Word said. He said, I'll go with you and I'll be with you in the midst of trouble. I'll be with you right there. And so, so what you've got to understand is that when that word, when you start, when you delight in the law, in, in what the word said, and when sickness comes against me, 
When, you know, I, I shared with some of you that I went into a Bible bookstore in a, another city and they had something burning in there that the minute I walked in there, I started choking and, and my, you know, all of this. And, and I've been in a battle with that. That doesn't mean I lose the battle. That means I stand knowing that I'm coming out. I'm knowing that, that he already paid for whatever that was that came against me in that Bible bookstore. You understand that on the inside of me, there's not a question or a wonder, but that's the delight in the law. Understand what he's saying. And so, so number three is that we need to delight ourselves in the law of the Lord. So how do I do that? Whatever you're walking through, whatever you're dealing with, you find what the law says about that. What does, what does God's word say about that? What did Jesus say about that? And that's what you get that buried in your heart. And I'm telling you, it will cause you to delight in him. Amen? Amen. Okay. So now uh, we're going to, um, oh, yes, yes. Uh, I'll go ahead and say that right now too. Uh, you must also be planted in the house of God. Connected to the body of Christ. This morning, uh, between services, we gathered together to comfort one another. And, uh, and that comes in being connected to a body in Christ. So it's very important to be producing. You know, uh, you can produce, uh, uh, produce along the way. But I want to be like being in an orchard, don't you? I want to be where the overseer is uh, is watching and making sure that I'm not just spinning my wheels and I'm not just just existing or I'm not just buying time or or anything. I want to make sure that I'm producing, don't you? Amen. And so I must stay connected to the body of Christ because you know. So and I, I help people say this to me. Well, I love God, but I just don't go to church. You know, well, I, you know, I believe in God, but uh, I, I don't care about going around all them hypocrites. Y'all hear that? <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I love God, but I don't need all that. Well, yes, you do need all that. And I can tell you this. There's not a church house in, on the face of the earth that doesn't have someone in there struggling. Church isn't a house of perfect people. Church is a house of people who worship God. And so if you are staying home from church because you think they're all hypocrites, then you're missing out on gathering in a place to worship God. It didn't say worship one another, but to come together and worship God. Amen. And so that's an important part of our life. Okay, so now we're going to start in the Word. Let's go back to Galatians because that's where we're, we start this. And so each time that I cover one of these uh, manifestations of the fruit, uh, will we'll always be in Galatians. So Galatians uh, chapter 5 and verse 22 and 23. And it says, but the fruit, you notice it's singular, the fruit. It didn't say fruits, but the fruit of the Spirit and the first one that it lists is love. And we covered that. And if you, if you want to uh, get that teaching, you can go back to August 16th, and that was where it began. Uh, and uh, if you are on live stream or uh, YouTube, you can pull those up. Um, okay, so the fruit of the Spirit, it is love. The second one is joy. Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. So there's nine manifestations. We've already covered love, and today we'll cover joy. First of all, um, let's see. Yeah, let's go to Psalms 92. Let's go to Psalms 92. <clears throat> Psalms 92. And we're going to get a couple of verses there. Yeah, okay. Uh, Psalms 92, verse 13. It says, 
those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. So now you see he's established why we need to be planted in the house of the Lord. Amen. And um, I like the word flourish. It means uh, to be green and healthy. And, uh, and so he's saying those that be planted in the house of the Lord. And, you know, uh, I'm going to say it like this. Don't visit church or God's house uh, on Christmas and Easter, the CEO bunch. Well, I go to church twice a year, Christmas and Easter. But he didn't say visit the house of God. He said those that are planted... They're planted in the house that they will flourish. Boy, isn't that good news? That's good news. So I'm not going to church just to fill up two hours a week. I'm going to church so that I can flourish and, and be healthy and, and be productive. Amen? Amen. Boy, this is good stuff. And then it said they shall still bring forth when they're old. In old age, I'm still going to be flourishing. And you know, that's another thing. Let's don't get sold out to, the, to that card that the enemy wants to give you that, well, you know, you're getting older now. You can't do the things you used to do. Well, who told you that? Who said you couldn't? Who said stop doing that? Who, who said that? You know, uh, sometimes we've got to fight our way out of the paper bag of, of hopelessness. Sometimes we got to make a stand that, no, I'm not giving in to that. I'm not giving in to that. Amen. You know, uh, I want to be that one that when I go for my doctor's appointment, they're shocked. I'm not shocked. They are. Amen. Amen. That they, they can't believe how old I am. They can't believe it. You know what? I have them say that to me sometimes. They, I've had them say that to me. Well, I'm telling you right now, you, <laughs> you're really... I just can't believe this. You're not on any medication? No. Nope. You mean you don't have any high blood? No. Nope. Don't have any of them. And you know what I tell them? It's all because of him. So I tell them. I get to testify. But see, the, the, the way of the world and the world system is to tell you and persuade you and convince you, well, you're old now and you're getting older and so the, your parts are wearing out and so you just might as well contend with how it's going on. But I'm going to tell you what Scripture said. He said that he'll renew my youth like eagles. Yes. He'll cause me to soar like eagles and he'll renew my youth. God will renew my youth, not me. Not me trying to go and get this done and get that done. No, I'm telling you right now that God said he will renew your youth. Are you standing on that word or are you going along with what the world says? Amen. Come on, saints. It's either amen or oh me. Yeah, and we've all been guilty of the oh me's. Come on. Amen. Amen. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's look at, um, okay, yeah. Let's look at Nehemiah. And you know, Nehemiah is just uh, uh, not, not too far in front of Psalms. Let's see, it's in front of Job, I think. Well, probably, yeah. Uh, if you'll go backwards, about th three books from Psalms, you'll find Nehemiah. And we're going to look at Nehemiah chapter 8. <coughs> chapter 8, verse 10. And that's the only verse we're going to get, and then we're going to move on. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10 says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for, here we go, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay, so now let me show you something here about the joy of the Lord. There is your joy. Let me tell you, you know, you might bring me a, a now y'all know I like sweets. Now you might bring me a big old strawberry shortcake with, with lots of ice cream and strawberries on top of that thing. And that would give me joy. Me. 
But I'm not talking about my joy because my joy can become fickle. You know it can. Boy, I'd be all happy about something, make one phone call, and my, my feathers is drooped, and I'm down in the dirt. Come on, y'all know we're, we're normal. We're, you know, somebody say a mean word to me, and boy, I'm fired up now. You know, my joy, my joy went flying out the window. So I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the natural, natural. I'm talking about spiritual joy today because you've got to get this. Let me, let me read that last part again. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. I say that out loud. The joy of the Lord, Lord. not my joy, joy. but the joy of the Lord Lord. is my strength. strength. Okay, so then for the joy of the Lord to be my strength, then it's got to be in me. Because see, I know that God is sitting over in the heavens and Jesus Christ is seated by him and I know that there is a throne. Man, the angels are are praising and worshiping him continuously. I know my mother and my daddy are over there. Listen, they look young and beautiful and they're all full of life and joy. See, I know all that, all of that. And so the joy of the Lord, when I get to heaven, I'm going to be just like him. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I won't need to have it anymore. I need the joy of the Lord right here, right now, because when I wear out fighting the battles of good faith, fighting and fighting and contending with the enemy. I've got to have a joy that's beyond mine. And it is called the joy of the Lord. And so therefore, I'll not wear out and I'll not back up, but I will contend and know that the joy of the Lord strengthens me. Whoa, I'm telling you, shout words today. Amen. The joy of the of uh, our joy, it it can be fickle. It it's not about emotions. This joy is not about emotions. It is something that is manifested in the spiritual realm. Yes. It's a supernatural joy that gives strength. So the supernatural supersedes the natural. Yes. You write that down. Now then, let's look at Psalms 51. Psalms 51. Are we getting this? Amen. Psalms 51. And and I'm going to give you a couple of of scriptures here. One is the Psalms 51, 9 through 12. And the other one is going to be Isaiah 12, 2 and 3. And so the Psalms 51, 9 through 12 is David talking, and Isaiah is, is, uh, is the prophet Isaiah talking. But they're both saying the same thing, and that's what I wanted to show you. So in Psalms 51, verse 9 through 12, hide, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and and what? Renew a right spirit within me. And listen, if you get busy about your own relationship with God, you'll not have time to look at someone else's. Because he gave us a prayer here And I'm going to tell you that many times in my prayer closet through tears. Because I live with me. I know know my shortcomings. I know. And I could stand up here and tell you all about all my shortcomings. But that won't help you. But what I can tell you is that don't be backward in saying, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew my spirit. I feel cranky and crabby, and I don't want to feel that way. I feel angry and irritated. I don't want to be like this. Lord, create in me. Change me. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So he said, verse 11, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12, restore. You know what restore means? You already had it one time. 
So if, I, if I'm asking him to restore something to me, that means I've had it, but I've lost it, and I need it again. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. So restore my joy. So when you feel weak and when you feel that you are wearing out and when you feel that you are heavy laden, go to God and ask him to restore and to create in you and to renew you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. This is good. This is good. Okay, now turn to Isaiah. <clears throat> Let's see, Isaiah 12, yes, Isaiah 12. <clears throat> Verse 2 and 3. Now remember the prophet Isaiah, that was David that said that. This is the prophet Isaiah. And <clears throat> chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. Behold, God is my salvation. And you know, we've established in this house that Salvation is a lifetime experience. It's from the time you're birthed into the kingdom of God to the time that you're looking at God. That is your salvation. It said, and behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation therefore with what joy. with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation with joy and so knowing that God is with me for my whole life that God will never leave me that he won't forsake me that he's with me and that when my strength fails me and when my 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 demeanor changes and and whatever is going on in my life to know that I can get along with him and to draw waters out of the wells of salvation that is my strength and my joy that I can re get renewed all over again. You know, uh, uh, this, this to me is the most comforting thing that I can find in this book is to know that my life doesn't... It, it doesn't have to be empty. That my life can be filled and full to the overflow. Not because of what I do or don't do. But because of what he has done. Because of what he has paid for. And because of what he promised me. Woo! I'm telling you. And to know that he's waiting for me. That the moment that I stop breathing in this earth. And that I step over. That he'll be waiting for me. And my rewards will be there. And, and to see all my loved ones. I'm telling you what. I'm going to tell you this today. Heaven's not half bad. <laughs> it's just not half bad place to go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, let me give you... Um, the last scripture that we're going to get is going to be John 15. And uh, I wrote this down. Let me, it's, I said, um, it is a divine joy that results from experiencing, from experiencing the knowledge of God's word. See, we can read the Bible and, and quote it and, you know, do all that. But if you don't experience, for instance, I remember the day that I experienced Galatians 2.20. I had been way, and maybe I need to tell this for live stream, but I had got a way, way out there. And, and I had just come back into the fold, and, and I fell in love with Jesus. I just fell in love with him. And I remember standing in my bedroom and I was weeping and I was telling him, Jesus, I just can't believe that you love me. 
How could you love me? I've disgraced your name. I've, I've brought shame to the kingdom. And I, I've failed you so much. How can you love me? And I remember that day. I didn't even know this scripture was in the Bible. But up out of my belly came that scripture word for word. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but yet not I. And the life that I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And when that last word came out of my mouth, Jesus said to me, You see, Barbara, I have faith in you. Because if he didn't have faith in you, he wouldn't put himself in you. He wouldn't put his own blood. But today, you can have confidence that he has faith in you. I remember that day that the revelation of that word came alive to me. And that was in 1996. And today... It is as real to me today as it was that day, the re revealing of his word. And so when I say that we must experience the word of God, I remember, I remember when he gave me Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. He gave it to me so clearly. He opened my understanding. Yes, that's what it is. When, when you get your understanding opened, I remember when I, I, I was laying up in bed and I was reading this scripture. I was just reading. And my eyes fell on this scripture. And all of a sudden, it was manifested to me that this really did happen. It wasn't something my mother and daddy preached. And it wasn't something that I learned in Sunday school. And it, it wasn't something somebody else told me. But all of a sudden, when I saw in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, that he took on himself every sickness and every disease and every sorrow and every grief. See, he knew that we were going to experience sorrow and grief. He knew that we were going to experience loss. He knew that we were going to experience sickness and diseases coming on us. But in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, he gave me a promise that upon himself he already took it and he already paid for it. And therefore, I don't have to fall under the load of it. And I realized it became real to me that when disease and, and junk tries to come on me, that I can run to my rock who is Christ Jesus and I can stand upon that scripture because it became knowledgeable to me. And what I'm talking about today is to begin to seek God, to experience the word of God. Don't just sit and read it for hours and not knowing what you're reading, but begin to experience what he says in the book. And I'm telling you right now, when sickness tries to prevail on you, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 will rise up and we'll take dominion over that thing. I'm telling you today that God is telling us something today to have our joy restored. How to have our joy restored is to know that I know that I know that I know that my whole life, everything about me, Everything that I ever was and ever will be is in the hands of the living God. Amen. 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 Who, my goodness gracious, it's so wonderful to know Jesus. I bet everybody's already in your scripture except me, right? All right, John. Oh, I did have, I have one more after that one. John 15. St. John chapter 15. Did you know uh, chapter 15 was my daddy's favorite uh, chapter in the whole Bible? <clears throat> he loved, I'm in the Bible, and, and, and we're the branches. Okay, chapter 15, verse 11. 
these things, now first of all, this is Jesus talking to us as if he was standing right here and speaking these words to us. We'd really pay attention, wouldn't we? Well, he's speaking to us. These are his words. He's saying, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Now, we talked about earlier that my joy can change. My joy can go away. But now Jesus is saying that he wants his joy to remain in me so that my joy will stay full. Think about that. Let that soak in. That my joy will stay full. So by me having the joy of Jesus in me, that I'll not lose my joy. Is this powerful? Yes. This is wonderful that Jesus is saying to us today. And our last scripture is Jeremiah 15, Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. And we're going to all read this together, <clears throat> read out loud. I'll give you time to find it. Has everybody got it? Got it? All right, here we go. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Thy words were found and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. Three words I want everyone in this house to say. I am called. We ready? One, two, three. I am called. Let's do that again. I am called. One more time. I am called. You know what? He's given us word today. When he talks about eating the word, we know we can't tear these pages off and eat them, and that's, what, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about to consume the word, to receive the word in our spirit and that it will sustain us through every obstacle, through everything that we walk through in this earth and keep us full of joy. Did we get it? Amen. Amen. Stand your feet. Well, thank God for Jesus. The Lord's really been in the house today, restoring and, and comforting. And uh, when uh, the arrangements are made for, um, for um, Charlie's son, Carson, uh, we will announce it. And so um, we're going to sign off on live stream and... Uh, Blessings to everyone there. And so... Uh